Hello and welcome back to the Switchboards Artist Interview Series. Uh, tonight marks our fifth interview of the year and we're so grateful for you for tuning in, so thank you so much. Um, if you know anyone who couldn't make it tonight, uh, this interview, like all the others, will be posted to our website and social media channels, so be sure to check it out. We have Andrew Ryan yet again on our tech support and our ace videographer, so thank you so much. Way better than my way outdated phone Instagram live <laughs> process. So anyway, thank you very much. So you'll, you'll be able to watch the professional video after the fact. Um, yeah, so tonight I'm sitting here with Ryan Kelly, um, owner of Wire by Ryan and founder of Spl Split Rock Studios in Byfield, Mass. Um, Ryan is best known for his wire wrap sculptures, um, which can be found in shops and galleries throughout the United States. Um, he's also a passionate teacher, educator, organizer, um, uh, you know, you're teaching at local businesses, breweries, um, and also your social media presence should be mentioned as well. <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah. He also, if you've ever met Ryan in person, you'll after before the end of the conversation, you will have been connected with like twelve to fifteen <laughs> other people that you never knew before. But um, you'll develop a lifelong community relationships with. So, um, yeah. So we, I feel like you and I could talk for a long, long time. Uh, we have so many connections, so many wonderful, energizing conversations that we've already had, but in the interest of sort of keeping this um, on point and, and for the benefit of our viewers, I would love to um, you know, dive right in and keep this, I've, I've sort of broken it up into um, a few questions I'd love to center around, but um, we also take some time, um, you know, just gonna maybe check out to see if there are any um, questions that pop up. Um, people can ask um, via Instagram Live uh, if they want, we can save time at the end for that. So, um, okay, so, yeah, let's dive in. So I actually never asked you this. I was thinking about this. I know. I know. This is a real interview uh, question. Uh, don't be scared. Um, when did you first start identifying as an artist and actually using that title? Yeah. When? That's a good question. Yeah. Um, I don't think I've been asked that before. I think the biggest thing, thinking back, it would probably be when I like sold my first piece, okay. which was like right after high school. Okay, interesting. Yeah. But now I give that spiel when I like see other creatives or when I'm out at a gallery or like with Taylor or anything. How you introduce yourself is how you will be spoken as. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you have like, if you're at a gallery or you're at, at a coffee shop or anything, and it says artist right on my business card. Right. And like, you, yeah. I think it's like a personal thing for creatives where sometimes you're hesitant to call yourself an artist mm -hmm. or maybe you didn't go to school and you don't feel like you earned the title of an artist, mm -hmm. but technically everybody is an artist in their own way. That's mm -hmm. what I talk about when I give classes yeah. or yeah. talks or speeches from, you know, kids to adults. It's like, everyone actually is an artist. I everyone believe that. Yes. I, yeah. I, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but it's it's one of those things where you don't, you know, you earn a doctorate, yeah. you earn, you know, Esquire, and you earn all these things. But when you're an artist, whether you're self-taught or schooled or, or traditionally trained, mm -hmm. you don't get, you know, your name artist. Yeah. There's no like pronoun. Well, there are, yeah, like, like, there's we, no title. Hmm. <laughs> I think I might make a school. I do that I because I, the yeah, the it's, yeah. I think it's categorically and historically kind of hmm. looked down on, you know, so back in the day, it's so funny. Artists were like mm -hmm. so yeah, rare yeah. and so good. Yeah. And you have these famous paintings that were like, oh my gosh, like now we even learn about them hundreds of years in the future. Mm -hmm. But everything today is done in that way. Yeah. And it's a shame that people don't respect themselves enough or revere themselves enough to to own up to that. Well, it's interesting. I have to interrupt you because this literally my second question yeah. was sort of about, and I started asking myself this after I realized I never asked you this and kind of knowing a little bit about your background. Um, what do you think we're not offering our younger artists to to sort of inform them that like 
this, this is what it takes, or yeah. here, here's some pathways, or, um, you know, what are we missing telling our younger artists or, or the experiences we're not um, allowing them to experience because of their age? I don't know. So I, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this, this is literally my second question. Yeah. So I was like, this is gonna come up. I think if we start talking about this, yeah. And, um, what are the available support networks for younger artists, and who are they looking up to? And, yeah. Um, anyway, I just was I, thinking a lot about that. Yeah. Well, I think I would like to think that I am a part of that solution and not the problem. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times when I go to schools, to breweries, to auditoriums to whatever and I introduce myself as an artist because that's what I am professionally but also just passionately and personally something that helps is especially younger you don't know something exists until you see it mm -hmm. it's the classic like you got to see Santa sure. but you know it's real yeah, yeah. or when you see a woman firefighter or yeah, when right. you see sure. you know yeah. a woman president yeah. or whatever I have been told, and I'd like to think that this is true, that just me being, you know, a youngish guy making art as a living in a school, working with young children, they see that as now a possibility. Mm -hmm. And there have been a couple times right after COVID, you know, the, as far as schools being open, mm -hmm. um, I taught 353 kids in Ipswich <laughs> in one week. Yeah. And it was like K to five and yeah. it was crazy. Yeah. But I had, I will never forget this one young girl named Robin. She was like, wait, you can make art as a job? Yeah. And I was like, wow, can I freaking yeah. film this? And like, and how old was she? Was she, she was in like, the first or second grade. First I forget, grade, yeah. Which like is great that she's learning then, but I feel like there's still, kids are still in that mode of like, everyone's an artist. Yep. Everything you're creating is great. Like when, when do we lose that? And I know this sounds Adult so cliche, censorship, yeah. It's... But, but. What do we, we need to like, what do we need to hang on to in like later elementary, middle school, high school, you know, and then the career path. Um, yeah. STEM education is absolutely necessary and yeah. we need more science-based learning. Not like course, STEAM. But I'm yeah, yeah. So, but what about, what about the performance arts? Yeah. What about the, like. I anyway, did marching so, band, I did mallet percussion. Yeah. That was my thing in high school. I didn't, I didn't really do art until the very end and after I graduated. Yeah. My parents are musical. My brother's incredibly musical. Like. It was something that they know that math skills help with English. They know that. They know that when you're used to these equations, you can do not only the science, but then you do the English and the speech and all these different things. They know those are connected. Why are we not also admitting that the spatial relations mm -hmm. of basic drawing or performing and understanding your relationship and the proprioception of your own body, why are they not linking that in a more profound way and that's why i prefer steam over stem because i've been given grants or opportunities to go into schools and, and pay as a guest speaker because they considered it steam yeah and they considered it that yes i'm making wire art which is a physical thing but then you throw in you talk about the copper wire mm -hmm. and you make it about science as far as the minerals and the mm -hmm. the elements and then you say what about the patina what if we heat it it changes color mm -hmm. and it changes the malleability and you go into it or the fact that copper's in electronics and that mm -hmm. you can really connect it yeah. and it's not a stretch Absolutely. there are some things in art that are a little bit of a stretch but well so that's a great lead in to sort of us talking about your physical artwork yeah. and and sort of how did you start first creating like how did these first start happening? Mm -hmm. And um, I also am really interested in, in um, I know you do a lot of commission work these days. Mm -hmm. um, how do you advertise your commission work? And I'd love for you to offer our viewers sort of maybe an anecdotal, like what was one commission in particular that stands out to you, um, whether it was the actual physical piece or, or if it was something about the sort of more business end of things, mm -hmm. like what was a struggle or what was sort of um, something that you found to be uh, very successful and a proud moment. Um, I know it's kind of a layered three tier yeah. question. But We're on like Great British Bake Off. Of I know. <laughs> if I was to like explain the process, it's I take wire, it comes on yeah. spool, yeah. and then I twist hundreds and hundreds and feet and miles mm -hmm. and all this stuff, mm -hmm. and you make that. I, I was so overjoyed the other day when I came to check in and say hi. Yeah. And, um, 
to actually finally watch you just sort of like we were talking mm. and you just picked up a spool of wire you, you probably didn't realize you were doing it and <laughs> yeah. you were just like uh-huh uh-huh you were like yeah. like a weaving or something i don't know it was it was really i was like yeah i probably did it in my sleep <laughs> right yeah. I, I should do it on my sleep i like be more I know, I know. <laughs> um but yeah really, that's the it, it was neat to see that part of the process and it's also amazing i love that you teach other people i mean you just yeah. said a minute ago I, I, the sense that Yes, this is work that I do, but I also do a lot of other things. Yeah. But, but this work here, like, you teach people how to make things like this. Yeah. So teaching things. people, like, who are so enamored of, like, I have no idea what to do this. Like, I, I'd love to know what it takes. And, and to know that as an artist who is willing to share their process and in such a way that's, like, anyone can be an artist. Like, yeah. I just, that is a way we've always connected. Yes. And, and a philosophy that we've always shared that um, I really appreciate. But, yeah. Um, so, so yeah, so we have these, um, this type of work that um, obviously is very attractive. People are really excited about it. Commissions. Yeah. yeah. So can you tell me about like well, the craziest commission you've ever done? Oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> we would need a lot of interview for, I know, I know. for the like things I've learned in good and bad. I think yeah. the biggest thing, and this is a blanket statement. Yeah. Some artists, all artists have avenues and things that they prefer mm -hmm. and they're really good at. And we all excel, every single person excels at things and every single person needs work on some mm -hmm. things. For me, I don't mind the customer service side of art as a business. Mm -hmm. Some people struggle with it. Sure. And it's not easy. And it's like if you're in the restaurant industry or if you're in the car detailing business. I mean, mm -hmm. there are aspects where there's a reason that you have the nice receptionist person <laughs> yeah. versus you know the person in the back that is just doing, doing the work. Yeah, sure, sure. So for me and the skills from my parents and being involved with the people I am, I find that my skill lies in working with someone to understand what they want, mm -hmm. to understand their goal and the passion and the reason behind the piece because mm -hmm. I, I truly get a lot of gratification out of making something that someone's going to enjoy yeah it's yeah. not a commodity yeah um but it's not easy because you have to learn to be specific mm -hmm. and eloquent and approachable and yeah. it's hard to do in, in a modern age with technology to be kind and energetic through text yeah. which some people are very bad at texting in general yeah. Yeah. um yeah. but that's something that really I prioritize it. Mm -hmm. I love that I can post and be myself on social media and when they message me, they know it's me. Yeah, right. Um, yeah. Which some businesses can't do and that's totally fine. Maybe right. one day I, I won't do that as much. Right, right. But the right. commission side, I like it because it takes the pressure off. A lot of artists have to make inventory mm -hmm. because they're going to galleries, they're, they're trying to do scale, they're trying to do that. It's taken, this is my 10th year in business, mm -hmm. and I'm totally self-taught. Congrats. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I never went to school for art, I never went to school for business. I've literally just learned through like the school of Google mm -hmm. and community and mm -hmm. all the stuff we talk mm -hmm. about. But I like commission work. Yeah, well, the, Not, the connection. Yes, it's Your a connection. Your ability to connect with people, yeah. I think that's what I'm hearing. It's like, um, and that's sort of why, what I love doing about um, consulting work yes. is to be that person that, I mean, it's great, it's rare that you find an artist who, right, can do both things. And like you say, it's hard. It, you're not gonna do it all the time. As you get busier and as more people start to hear about your work or your classes or what, you know, this is split, split Rock Studios, which we'll ask about in yes. a minute. Um, right, that, you know, that one-on-one that -on -one connection is going to, you know be less and less of your time yeah. but i think that's where it starts is that people know that like when they're approaching your business um they're going to get a, an impassioned response and they're going to yeah. get that like connection of like i actually love communicating with clients and i love um so yeah i, I it's definitely hard. appreciate that it's yeah. hard it's but, time consuming yes and, but yeah. that's the thing is that there are artists out there that love to make art as you know a side job or a personal passion because they just love to paint or they love to quilt or you know anything and we as humans everyone needs a hobby mm -hmm. <laughs> there are a lot of people that probably need more hobbies yeah. <laughs> but yeah. um i think the biggest thing is i know I, I know i have a vision of what i would like my end goal to look like mm -hmm. in some way mm -hmm. and i also know from the community from amazing conversations and education and role models mm -hmm. and things that you learn from social media 
that I know that it's going to take a certain amount of work and direction to get there. Yeah. One of those directions is being approachable. Mm -hmm. One of those directions is being professional mm -hmm. and consistent, not in the way that I, every, I make every piece the same, but they know that overall consistency is a huge thing with Actually. friends, with business, with anything. And part of that consistency is the inconsistency mm -hmm. where some months I have two commission projects, five trees sell at a gallery, yeah, right. a class every month that I try to do at least every month just yeah. for something. Yeah. But then there are months where it's like, maybe I just made three pieces yeah, the right. entire month. Sure, sure. And that is hard because it's not the corporate thing where you have expectations and yeah. you gotta stick to it. Yeah. Life happens. Mm -hmm. And my time, I only have 24 hours in a day and I don't get sleep anyway. So, yeah. Yeah. you know, yeah. I really need to balance commission work friends, community, recharging that creative battery that we talk about all the time, combined with making art for the sake of making art mm -hmm. and also making art to do my job yeah. and to pay bills and yeah. to yeah. reinvest into the community and myself in the way that I'd like to. Mm -hmm. So it's not easy and commission work has its ups and downs, Yeah, sure. but I really love the ability to do custom things mm -hmm. and whether that's a wire tree or I do some other metal work and some light welding right. and soldering yeah. or you know I have two pieces on the new report rail trail and I'm yeah. heavily involved with our neighbor's table in Amesbury mm -hmm. and I help create their spoons to raise money or the yeah. friends new report trees on the rail trail to raise money for the park and yeah. there's other things that are not wire trees yeah. but it's absolutely art by Ryan Kelly yeah. yeah and that's where the wire by Ryan thing is like it's wires somehow related in there sure. or yeah. not yeah. but I like that diversity because it doesn't let me burn out. It lets me see and get recharged because I'm helping a nonprofit or I'm, people right. are seeing it and taking pictures with their kids right. outside or right. the client has friends over and I'm getting pictures from people I don't even know. Yeah. Oh, I'm at Patricia's house and I just saw this. Yeah. And like, that yeah. is so rewarding as an artist because you put so much time and energy in and that one message changes your whole time. Yeah, sure. You know, and I think that that's, that is like couldn't be more apt lead in to asking you a little bit about Split Rock Studios, um, because I think that as people living and working artists, and um, this every day we're we're working with either directly with artists or installing or consulting or commission or actually in the studio, um, there's this release that happens when you're sort of working watching other or facilitating other artists work mm. and i know that like you know artists don't work in a vacuum so to to recharge we go to other exhibitions and yeah. we go to see music and we go to like of course i mean anyone does that even if it's not a practicing artist yeah. but um but i just um understand what you've told me about Split Rock Studios and sort of what's happening. I'll let you share yeah. as much or as little as you want yeah. to about that. But it's really exciting to me because that's sort of like, like that's what the switchboard has been yes. for years. Is um, either just myself or myself and my former partner Haley supporting artists. It just brings us so much joy. I mean, it really comes down to like a life in the arts. Mm -hmm. is, is just seeing other artists have opportunities and trying to provide those um, in some semblance. So, yeah. so I'll let you sure. tell what yeah. you will Definitely. about what, what's going on there. And, yeah. Um, yeah, can you share so a little for bit the, about yeah, for, for the whoever sees this that doesn't yeah. live with me and hear it not stop <laughs> like my parents do. Um, Split Rock Studios has been a dream of mine for eight years. Mm -hmm. And it kind of has led my whole life to it. So I say it's like a lifelong dream. Yeah, yeah. But basically, it is a live work artist residency in Byfield, Massachusetts, in the beautiful woods with acres and acres of nothing behind you mm -hmm. and that forest bathing natural recharge that people all need as, as a business and as a, a residence for people to enjoy. Mm -hmm. And the property is five acres. The building itself, the actual physical Split Rock Studios is a two family home where I live and work on one side mm -hmm. and three artists will live and work and thrive on the other. Mm -hmm. um, and it will have, you know, we're working with Andrew Sidford Architects and it will be 
just beautiful, big, functional space. Yeah. The problem with a lot of artists that I've seen and the problem I want to solve is artists love, people love to throw artists in the loft or in, yeah. you know, a place that can be gentrified, yeah. but they're not necessarily designed with artists in mind. Mm -hmm. And we've had conversations where it's like, how do I unload a truck into this space? Yeah. How come I want to, what if I want to paint something that's bigger than three feet by three feet? Right, yeah. How do I get this up the stairs? How do I fit this through a doorway? And I've ran into those problems in my own business in 10 years, uh, making larger work sure, yeah. and the reality of needing things that don't burn around me. Yeah. So if I'm yeah. welding or soldering or torching yeah. or having a space that truly is designed with the artist in mind of any medium. And that's where it gets a little tricky with the design. Sure. But the goal is to have this place that not only is home mm -hmm. to artists that are living and working and succeeding, mm -hmm. but also the openness for a photography room that people can create as a space or rent as a space mm -hmm. to use for whatever endeavors they have. Yeah. To be able to have a beautiful grounds in the woods where maybe they're hosting the yoga retreat or they want to do a concert or they mm -hmm. want to do a beautiful dinner for their friends or you know a banquet for to raise money for yeah. somewhere yeah. and it's those really exquisite artistic ventures that we are so lucky in this area to have stunning buildings mm -hmm. downtown vibrant which everybody has been hearing for the last yeah. 20 minutes yeah but sometimes you want to get away mm -hmm. and i'm in, i'm incredibly inspired by alnova mm -hmm. in kensington new hampshire mm -hmm. I'm incredibly inspired by um, places in Boston and beautiful buildings like the Liberty Hotel. I've had work there, very different places, but I want to have a place that I like mm -hmm. and build and design a place that people and locals can find value in and continue to further their passions and creativity with something that I can offer. So you mentioned, um, you know, having this is benefit to the community as well. Will there be, well, first of all, will artists stay there for a certain amount of length of time? Yeah. We have like sort of an official residency program and yeah. also how open to the public will it be? Yeah. So right now on paper, it's um, going to be like a 12 month lease for the oh. artist residence. Yeah. Um, down the line, bigger picture, I would love to do a true artist residency with one of the kind of oh, areas yeah, yeah. so that two people could be there, but one person could be rotating monthly awesome. because yeah. I want the reach of Split Rock Studios in this little rural yeah. town and yeah. woods to, I want people from all around the world to come there. Awesome. So that's one yeah. thing. Great. And then as far as open to the public, it is private. It is, um, you know, residential. Um, it won't be, you know, a shop or any true, you know, business operating right. out there, right. but I would love to think just like many artists that um, being able to have an appointment yeah. set for a client or, you know, having some kind of event that we do open sure. doors yeah. Um, yeah. Right. down the line. I'm very lucky. My neighbors are incredibly community oriented, mm -hmm. passionate also in the arts, yeah. nature, farming, all that. So I think the awesome. biggest thing is just the possibilities of anything we want to do. That is so exciting. <laughs> like just like just the start. So thrilling. I know. And I know that you've been dreaming about this for a long time. Yeah. And to see it last year you actually purchased the land, yes. right? Like so that was like Yeah. Well, it turns out you need that first thing. <laughs> well it was first things first, yeah. During yeah. the pandemic. Yeah. And, you know, um I don't know, I'm just so excited for you and we're the switchboard is just so grateful that you'd spent time sharing that with us and um I don't know, you know let us help in any way we can and um our, our trove of artists and, and community members and just the support that the switchboard has had over the years is immeasurable and um i'd love to um steer people towards what sounds like is going to be an incredibly unique experience um, yeah. just in our backyard so Definitely. yeah thank you for sharing a little bit about of course that. <laughs> i want to thank you and the whole team and, and jess and Lula and everybody that yeah. this is my first official residency in right. any way yeah um and it's been a crazy month for both of us in so many different ways but i'm truly grateful to be here the ability to like come to work in some ways yeah. and and hang out in this beautiful space in a great city and see friends and get food and, and work on some commissions mm -hmm. and we're very excited for our class next week and the final party with tiny circus mm -hmm. and I'm just, I'm inspired by you and I'm so grateful to know you and the space that switchboard is and, and the other creatives in this community, it just is reinforcing why mm -hmm. I want to do the things I want to do. 
Yeah. Uh, well, please continue doing that <laughs> and continue also being like such a lively connector yeah. to, to everyone um, and to creative people. We just, we just need that, especially yeah. after the past couple years. So, um, yeah, thank you. And I heard you mention, um, I think before we end, we definitely need to um, talk about next Tuesday's Class of the Tap. We have yes. two tickets left. There's three, three tickets left right now, yeah. which will probably be gone soon. But yep. yes, I offer monthly classes at local breweries, which I hope to continue because it's awesome. getting cold. But yeah, yeah. Um, yeah it's super be fun. Time. So that'll be great. So it's next Tuesday, three tickets left. Yeah. People can find them at uh, wirebyryan.com or at Yeah. Uh, through Eventbrite. Yeah. Um, and then 30, um, October 30th, next Saturday, um, There'll be um, our closing reception celebration of uh, Ryan's residency. Yeah. Tiny Circus is yes. going to be playing, right? Yes. Super gonna, exciting. You. You're going to get noise complaints. It's, no, no. <laughs> it's awesome to have music in here, as yeah. Andrew will attest. Yes. Um, so, yeah. So, we're really excited. Hopefully, people can join us for those in-person events. And, um, yeah, I think I think that Perfect. about does it. Perfect. So, um, thank you again for making the time tonight, Oops. Ryan. And, it's always so nice. Um, you know, I'm going to glance real quick to see if anyone has any questions yeah, before yeah, we wrap. Course, yeah. um, so hold on one moment. Let's check it out. Cool. I think we, people are saying hi, people are joining and stuff. So I think we're good. So thank awesome. you so much for tuning in and um, hope to see you downtown again soon. Bye, everyone. Thank you.